what stood out to you about the run game throughout throughout camp? Like, what are things you think you guys will be able to hang your hat on? Uh, just consistency, getting the yardage when the play might not be perfect. You know, you, know, you want to play with running game with an attitude, with a mentality. And we're going to coach it to gain every hat, every leverage, and things like that. But to be honest with you, sometimes they got guys going to lose it. Sometimes the guys are going to get over the top pretty fast. Sometimes the double team is going to not get there as quick. We're going to hang on because we had to stay on the double team line back over the top quicker. So how are we going to still get positive yardage? So just like golf, man, we're just trying to advance the ball. So we can hit the high, so we can hit the low. But we got to make sure we're advancing the ball and we're not taking as many as zero. Minus games. So I thought it'd be consistent and doing a good job of getting that. If it, if it ain't six, at least it's three. Is that a skill set for the running backs? Is there other position groups? Like who's the oh, strain, finish, understanding. But I do think these backs have done a good job of this playing. That's one of their high attributes they can do. Coach, what stands out about Georgia Tech on the field? And what kind of is going to go into the group that kind of I mean, I think the size of them, sure size inside. They got two good interior guys. They got a good twitchy defensive end with them, Lamelo. Athletic, speed, can chase things off the backside. He's got a good job. And we also got the guys that have played with some of those guys. KJ knows him. Uh, you know, uh, uh, bank. So they got some crossover there, but I just think with that D line, just the size and the athleticism they have on the edge. You got an experienced guy coming back. I think he can play last year. We played against in 2022. So they got some guys that have been there for a while. We work in that system, so we're not going to make many very good mistakes. How, uh, what stands out? I know you faced the, the defense coordinator who was at Duke last year. You went up guy, I guess, how, what stands out about his defense? How do you weigh maybe the personnel they have versus what you know about the scheme he's going to be You need run fits. You know, sometimes the picture doesn't show who's fitting what gaps. You know how to manipulate the scheme and basically who's gap twisted up the front, up the front. They do a good job of that. And manipulating who plays the C gap and D gap and who where that safety is fitting the things. So I think they do a good job of protecting the perimeter, but also um, doing a good job of disguising where guys are lined to really actually fit. What are your thoughts on the wide receivers, especially like the last week and a half or so of, of practice? Yeah, I mean, they're doing what they're supposed to do. we got good explosive guys that's catching the ball and running. That's what they're supposed to do, and we expect them to do that. So it's good to see it coming together now. That, was, that position of all positions is the real one of camp. Ain't nobody putting more yardage and miles per hour and yardage on the field and miles that they're putting in. So there is a nutrition that comes with that as well. I think, you know, we gave them a little time off. They had a couple of days in between. The legs got back under, so they had to go fast again. So it's also that grind and nutrition of camp. So you're getting to see them with that speed, full display after we take care of them a little bit. You kind of talked about the wide receivers and Jalen Brown. and be a starter today. I mean, you want him off. So it's just reality. He's earned what he got. You know, man, that's the reality of it is now. You know, different packages. We can come out different packages. We can come out different personnel. Group. But now nah, he's he's a guy I'm excited about because he's starting to put it all together. Because he had to come in and learn it too. You know, and he faced a little bit of adversity in the spring. So I'm excited about the receiving group because all those young guys are stepping up. Elijah, Jalen, those guys are gonna be around here for a while. Akeem, those guys are gonna be here for a while. So to watch them grow and prosper and, and, and watching them make plays now is exciting. Seems like uh, DJ's last couple practices have been some of the better ones we've seen from him this preseason. I guess where have you seen the most growth from him over these twenty some practices? And I guess how encouraging is it? It seems like he's playing some of his best ball right now with the season here. Yeah, you want him to progress as we go, but also the install stops. I mean, we, we installed we had eight, nine installs through nine practices. So, you know, each day was something new that you gotta go back and review. So it's hard to say he's gotten better throughout. He has, but also the install stop is more specific to what the game plan is. So he's gonna look a little bit better because his understanding is not just installing the offensive plays as we go through camp. Coach, in today's day and age of college football, didn't they have like deep trails on the defensive side? How hard is it to game plan without seeing anything on film? Oh, they got film. They transfer, yeah. They probably play somewhere else. Now we're gonna watch the high school film and everything. We're gonna find a way to get the evaluation. So I think it's just now just detailing where you get the film from and make sure you got a good resource on it. What are the things with DJ's game that you're confident in that you know for the tackling? He, he's going to do well on game. Agent experience, poise. He's not going to come out there big eyed or worry about the trip. He's going to be able to handle distractions because he's seen them all. He's seen the highs, the lows. So he provides that steady, constant voice to guys who maybe haven't. You talked about the inexperience at the receiver position. He's perfect for them because guys have been there and done it. When you get those calm eyes in the huddle on the field, it does something for those players. For you as a coach, when you see a quarter, especially that position, have those calm eyes, like what, what does that do for you for confidence? I've been fortunate right? being here with Jordan and DJ, so I've been, I've been spoiled, you know, and then he went back to my old day. We had consistent quarterback play where I've been, so I've been spoiled in the professional. Coach, what stands out about uh, Coach Bertita and how much confidence do you have to, um, you know, handle the, the shift? Uh, yeah, Coach Bertita's been here for two years. He's been in the room, so it's not really a shift or a transition. You know what I mean? He knows what it is. He knows what's going on. He, he's a great asset to us coming from Louisville, so... I think that, you know, he'll be fine. Nothing's really that drastically different. I mean, he, he knows what the expectation is. He's going to year three here. 
with the system, so he'll be fine. Is it also um, helpful that you got a veteran offensive line that can basically just they can coach themselves if even worse push comes to show? Yeah, we tell them throughout the week, man. You know, our job as coaches is to get you prepared to make sure we give you the information. So you know, they should be able to handle it as old as they are. Maurice Smith was here before I got here. So if he can't handle it, I don't know who can. But I'm, I'm expecting those guys to show up, be who they are, and be, they've been all camp. You're not going to be on the sidelines. What are your plans to watch the game? Like, what are you doing? I don't know yet, man. I might, you know, find me a pub somewhere. <laughs> What's going on, man? Go be a fan for a day. Who knows? How much does Coach Fortier help you out? Like, what does he kind of do in the program? He's not a guy that gets, like, probably as oh, much shine as Oh, with that rule change, I mean, he's assisting in everything. Before the rule change, man, he was all breakdowns, advanced scouting, information, critiquing, accountability. So sometimes coaches, that, that's the good thing about our relationship is some coaches don't want accountability. I'm going to do it the way I do, and I can hide excuses what I do you want your friend in there, he's a friend of mine. He also is an accountability partner where he's making sure we're on top of him. We're, cut, we're seeing every angle. And we're holding ourselves just like we hold the players together. So to have that dynamic with our relationship where we check in some balances to make sure we're doing what's right has advanced that group so much and you saw the games go as we started when he came into the program. How, uh, I know the, the rules changes off where he can kind of have a more active role in practice. Like, how, has that, how has that helped matters? It's huge. It's huge, man. You know, you can split the line because you I mean, we're, we're a unit. Everybody talks about the O-line, but the guard position is completely different from the tackle position, which is completely different from the center position. There's three positions in that one unit that need their own detailed coaching and instruction. So that gives you a chance to break that up a little bit more instead of always working it together so you can get into the minor details of the game. But, Coach, how comfortable is the offense right now with the coach to player? How much communication is that kind of what you got something to do most of the season? Well, yeah, you can't handicap yourself with it either. You can get a quarterback a quick blast, pick up some information, but the reality is he got to go play. I mean, it's not like playing Matt. You, know, you got to control it with a with thing. You can tell him, hey, throw the pokes, throw this. Like, that's, not, that's not how it works. But you can give him a quick reminder, calm him, you know, a little bit more huddle. But, so I think that's an added benefit from all the NFL coaches we talk about, but nobody's out there directly instructing him during the play. You just give him a quick reminder, let him go play. You still got to know what's going on. Where have you seen Kyle Morlock grow this preseason to tight end as a whole? Yeah, Cal, Cal Morlock, I like his consistency. You know, he's, he's a guy that's not very noticeable, but he's always there. And when you're not noticed in the run game, that's good. That means you're not getting exposed. And when you notice a little bit of the pass game, he's made those contested catches. I went to DJ, I said, who you trust? I said, I trust Cal. So I think that he's earned that trust. And his work and his consistent every day. He's been out here every day, every practice, and just goes to work. So something to be said for that consistency. Jamar yeah. Williams should be at the prom, man. He should be in high school. You know, so for him to be out here and still protect that major role, that's kudos to him. He's a ball player, man. He's going to be a special, special talent. Coach?